Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So, hopefully, you guys have had a good holiday and had a great uh, Chrissy or uh, whatever you may be celebrating. Uh, I've been laid up for almost two months with a bad back, so I haven't really been able to uh, sit to uh, do videos. The last video was uh, rather painful sitting down, and I was a little bit out of it, to be quite frank. So we'll get back into it with a nice simple one. Some people might know this, other people might not. But it's how to um, sort your models, especially when you have a large model directory and your LORAs, to make it easier to use inside of um, your stable diffusions, whether you're using Automatic 11, uh, Easy Diffusion, uh, Krita. It should work um, equally as well with uh, Fucus and so forth. So we'll get over to the intro and then I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so I'm just over here in uh, Crider. So if we just come across... We'll hit on the cogs and we'll bring up the settings. Now, you've got your folders, so you can open these. And if I slide them over from my um, window here, you'll see that that's the folder with everything in it for the models that I have. And it's the same with the LORAs. If I open that up and I'll bring that over, you can see that. So that's where we put our additionals and of course I also have added in um, the modded file to point it to a different directory so I've pointed it to a central models folder with my LORAs, my checkpoints and so forth um, so you can see that there that I've got a lot in here now if we come down we'll just come through and we'll go to the test one I've already sorted this one to show you what we'll be doing and we can see here that we have these categorizations that come up instead. So it's easier to sort what you're actually doing and then you can just click whatever you actually um, want to do and know where they are nice and quick if you want to make a picture of someone and so forth, SDXLs, and you can do subfolders and subfolders as well. So we'll close that off and we'll come over and take a look at uh, Easy Diffusion here. And it's the same sort of thing. If we come down and we go to our LORAs and we click it, do it like this, you'll see that we have animals and we can see that they're subcategorized. So cartoon, clothing, details, and so forth. So as we come down, we can see they're all the same. So it helps us to uh, find them a little bit quicker. Uh, I'll close this one off. Okay, so now we have our folders. What we can come through and do is rename these. So we're gonna press F2, and then we're just going to rename each of these to remove the sorting tags that I originally had. And those were there, so I could just quickly scroll down and see the effect that that um, model has. So the model was trained in you know, 3D sort of uh, looking characters and TB characters and so forth. So now that we've done that, this is going to do the uh, same sort of thing. So we can just come through and remove these tags because we don't need them now. We've got them in folders, which is going to do the uh, same sort of thing. It's going to uh, sort them in the same manner. So we just come through, we just want to, each one of them, then you remember half of these, testing and what they were. But um, I started uh, trying to take um, pictures of uh, what the renders were to name those pictures to the actual model so I could quickly reference uh, little thumbs of what each of them were. So I can actually take a look at it and go, yep, that's the um, effect that I'm going for when I'm making things like my thumbnails. Uh, because I find um, one of the handy things with AI is it's saving me a lot of time making thumbnails. 
right? And one's not safe for work, but it has a more realistic looking human. So better skin details. I've mentioned that before. Um, it's the SDXL ones. So we can come in here. That. Back. So it takes a moment. We just want to sort them all, and then we'll open up um, Kryter AI Diffusion, and we'll see um, how it actually looks. But like I said, this is makes it easier when you're downloading because you can look at the style that it is, and you can just put it directly into the folder for that uh, style. And uh, on top of that. It saves having to go through and edit them every single time to add the tags that I had on there. So once we've done that, back in our models, we are done. So then we can just go back into your uh, Kryter and we should just be able to hit the refresh. Sometimes you've got to reload it. Let's see what happens here. We're just going to do that. We'll come back down to the uh, test model and we'll click it. And we can see here that now we have our tags at the front. And we can see that uh, 3D, and then it has the name next to it with a little dash. So it's easier to come down and find what we actually need. So these ones need sorting. These ones are the SDXLs. And we should have a double one down here with an SDXL. Ah, there she is there. So you have the SDXL and then SDXL human. And then that's the realistic uh, model for the SDXL. So you can see that they're all categorized and they're a little bit easier. Uh, don't know if it's changed in the newer versions to be like the LoRa's where they're like this. Uh, I do like this. This makes it really easy for the LoRa's to actually find. So I find that to uh, be fantastic. So that is something that I find handy and not a lot of people um, might not know about it. And um, if you had that scrolling issue that I mentioned before where uh, in one of my prior videos where you're scrolling through and then you um, sort of, you can't see what you're scrolling through to, um, which was affecting the Loras heavily, uh, doing this method fixes the problem because of the Kryter AI was uh, made with the intention in mind that most people actually have their um their lauras subcategorized so i think this is a handy video well that will help you out and of course it transfers over to automatic 11 and so forth so you'll still see them in there and they'll still be categorized in that so hopefully this video helped you out this is just a light one to uh help get me back into the swing of things since it's been a while and uh a little bit tender down there and a little bit groggy still from the uh, medications that were um, trying to make the uh, muscles stop cramping up. Um, the muscle condition that I have, basically all the muscles just go into a solid cramp and they um, were in cramp in my lower back and most of my back and um, top part of my legs for um, about six weeks. So that was uh, fun. So yeah, still getting myself back into the swing to do the videos uh, because of the whole issue with the uh, reading thanks to the dyslexia um, these are sort of free winged so I have all that information in my head and I'm just putting it out without actually physically reading a script so to get back into the swing of that it does take a few uh, videos to do it and I will have more videos coming for you guys soon and I hope this video helped you guys out. And if it did, of course, don't forget to hit that uh, like button. Uh, if I can remember where I put that. Um, uh, where are we? Like button, like button, like button. There we go. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and get the bell on for notifications. Um, yeah, my... I've got... Can't lift it up because you can't uh, can't get to it. Let's see if we can just get you into this camera for a moment. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's get you over to here and I'll show you what I'm using. Behind the scenes. So I'm using this mouse that I got off uh, a friend of mine. And this mouse, I put a little 
sticky pad over the bottom so it doesn't actually work because I have a different mouse that I actually uh, use to uh, do everything with. But this one here is programmable. So what I've done is I've programmed it to flick between my actual screens and control my OBS. So um, being on a budget, that's one of the uh, little handy uh, tricks is, uh, you know, if you can uh, get something and this is a broken mouse, you rattle around, you hear bits floating around inside. So I'm uh, not too sure what he did with it. But uh, it works fantastic as a OBS controller where I don't have to worry about the shortcuts on the uh, keyboard and setting that up. And it's easier just to have the hand on the mouse and then hit those buttons to actually go to it. Um, but over the break, I've uh, forgotten what those are. So yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. So hopefully this video uh, helps in some way. Subscribe, share the video, get the bell on for notifications. Uh, I'll leave a link to ha the video on how to point your Kryter to the um, a different location, a different hard drive with more models on it, um, which is very handy because if your Kryter installs itself typically to the C drive. I have been working with the external Comfy, which a lot of people have uh, asked for. But there are a lot of features when you link it to the external Comfy that are missing to if you're using the self-installed Kryter AI Diffusion. Uh, so for me, I find linking it to that central model directory um, allows me to keep the hard drive space free for um, my C drive. And I can have those in a central area, which just makes life a lot easier. But we'll talk about that in another video. Like, subscribe, get the bell on for notifications, and I will see you in the next stream time to this video. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it really helped me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.